Hi, welcome back beautiful people to another one of my YouTube videos. Today I'm going to be sharing with you all about my gut healing journey, my story. Make sure that you stay until the very end because I'm going to be giving you actionable steps that you can start implementing today. First of all, I'll tell you about my story, what I did to heal and how you can too. Throughout me telling you my story, you might even have some aha moments. Okay, let's take it back to where it all began. Throughout my entire life, I was able to eat whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted and not have any issues. I was very blessed to have, you know, a flat stomach. During my years in school, I also didn't exercise. I really didn't enjoy it, so I didn't force it. And I was your typical teenager. I loved going out to parties. I drank a lot. I did drugs. I'm not going to hide that because it's the truth and it was all part of my journey. And I feel like it is definitely part of the reason why I suffered the way that I did with my gut issues. I was that child that just always got sick no matter how many fruits and vegetables mum would try and feed me. For some reason, I always got colds, flus. My body was just very reactive. I had lymph nodes pop up. I had boils, skin flare ups and sugar cravings. Sugar cravings were a huge one for me. I love chocolate. I still do to this day, but my cravings have definitely diminished. It wasn't until 2019 when I moved out of home to Australia that I really started taking my health and fitness journey seriously. And I knew from a young age how important it was to live a healthy lifestyle. Mum educated me as a kid, but I really just started to take it seriously when I was on my own. And then I became a health coach with IIN. That is where my passion started. I learned so much about holistic health and I just wanted to learn more things every single day. Now, 2021 is when I began experiencing flare-ups. These flare-ups in my stomach really impacted me mentally because as I said, throughout my entire life, I could eat whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted and not have any issues with my stomach. It was very, very flat. So for me to like start noticing something changing in my body, I knew something was off. I knew something wasn't quite right. So I went on elimination diets. I tried fasting, which completely threw my hormones out of whack. So for those of you that don't know, gut health and mental health are directly interconnected because your gut and your brain are always in communication with each other via the vagus nerve. It's like a little highway that runs from the brain all the way down through your intestines. And so they're always communicating with each other. So if something's not quite right in your gut, it sends a message to your brain and lets you know. That's why you may not feel as good when you are bloated, gassy, you're constipated, your body is trying to tell you something and vice versa. If you're in your head telling yourself all these negative things, have a really negative outlook on life, your gut listens and it's going to respond with physical symptoms. Honestly, I tried everything, you name it. All the testing, went to all the doctors, all the therapists, got a colonoscopy, which costed a heck of a lot and everything came back with normal. Now, keeping in mind that these results are based off the majority of the population who have one to two underlying health issues and that don't feel very good. And so whenever I got these results back and they said I was normal, I knew that wasn't right because I didn't feel normal. I needed to feel how I used to. After being gaslit at the doctors and everyone telling me that things are normal and I just had to eat more fiber, I made it my mission to heal and I was determined. I knew that I was on my own and I'm the only one that can heal myself. Nobody else is going to do it for me. So I made sure that I got to the root cause of it and I wasn't going to let anything stop me. All of my family and friends will know just how determined I was for not settling, for feeling okay. I wanted to feel optimal because I knew how I felt in the past and I knew that I could get back there again. And it makes me so sad to hear how many of us are just accepting our symptoms and just thinking it's the way it is. It's not. There are so many things that we can do to start feeling better. I am walking living proof of it. First of all, I wanted to extend my knowledge in gut health. So I kind of fell into advanced education for gut health with IAN. That taught me so much. Everything that I know now comes from that course. I wanted to find answers so that I could heal myself. Another huge driving factor for me to get to the bottom of my health issues was my father. He passed away in his 30s and that is such a young age. He had a brain tumor and I mean, there's all these possibilities that, that could have gone wrong. You never really know. But I believe one of the reasons was he drank one to two liters of Coke per day. 
sugar is no good for anyone so to this day i don't drink any soda drinks i try and not have refined sugars i make sure that i have natural sugars so that was just another reason for me why i needed to stay committed to my health journey Okay, so the game changer for me was I got GI Map stool testing. That gave me an overview of exactly what was going on inside my gut. I found out that I had a gluten sensitivity. My body was very reactive to anything that I ate because it was marking it as an invader. And so I would have flare ups, I would have skin sensitivities, I would be very gassy. My body was just in hyperdrive, it was overreactive. Also, because I had very, very low beneficial commensal bacteria and this was due to being on restrictive diets to try and pinpoint what where the bloating was coming from i also did fasting and antibiotics this wipes out your microbiome it's like a bomb it really did take me a long time to rebuild my gut microbiome it takes much longer to rebuild a healthy gut than it is to wipe out parasites or something like that now, this is probably too much information, but if you are watching this, I know that you probably want all the ins and outs of my story so that it could probably help you too. I also had a fat malabsorption, so fat was coming out in my stool. I wasn't breaking them down properly, so I had to get digestion support to help break down the fats. Now, it wasn't a smooth journey because every day is so different. Like, you will have good days, you will have bad days. It takes, it takes time, depending on how long you've been going through your gut issues and what you've been doing in your life leading up to this point it can everyone's journey is so different so for some people it could take three months to heal for some it could take five for some it could take a year for me it took over eight months and i still to this day have slight gut, gut issues but i know what's causing it now i know what triggers it and i know how to fix it it's a journey but it's so worth it because you can get your life back I've got a few notes here. First things first, I came off the contraception pill after seven years. The pill messes with your gut. Now, I'm not telling you to give up the pill because it definitely does have its benefits if you've been put on it by your practitioner for pregnancy prevention. But for me, I knew if I wanted to heal my gut, it is time that I get off the pill. This was a personal preference for me. And the next thing I started doing was I stopped drinking alcohol. To be honest, I never really enjoyed drinking alcohol. Stopping alcohol was very easy for me. I never really enjoyed it, to be quite honest. I would only drink because everyone else around me was. And if I was drinking, I would go hard or go home. Like, you would never catch me just having one or two drinks. I would rather just sip on a lemon water than have like two drinks, to be quite honest. My way of drinking wasn't healthy at all because when I did do it, I would binge, I would get crazy drunk, which I don't regret anything. Like I had my fun, but I feel like now I don't really need it. This year I've only had two drinks, which was two gin and tonics, and that was in the middle of the year. I haven't had anything else since, and I haven't really felt the urge to. I think it's because I'm surrounding myself with people that don't drink a lot, so I find it very, very easy. When I started to heal my gut, I cut out inflammatory foods for a period of time so that I could rebuild my gut lining and make it stronger. Let me explain something. So this is what a healthy gut lining looks like, but if you have inflammatory foods, sugar, alcohol, stress, and all of that, it's gonna make it leaky. So then you're gonna have holes in your gut lining and you're gonna have food particles starting to seep through, causing gas, bloating, inflammation, all of these physical symptoms. So that is why it's really, really important that we rebuild the gut lining and make tight junctions. How I started rebuilding my gut lining, since my commensal beneficial bacteria were very, very low, I had to repopulate it with all the friendly probiotics and prebiotic, pre, prebiotics and probiotics. So I started taking Megaspore probiotics. This is good for anyone. It's just a very, it's a very safe probiotic. I was taking prebiotics in the form of food every single day. So prebiotics are found in lots of vegetables, very, very healthy vegetables like onion, garlic, leek, green bananas. Now for someone with IBS, prebiotics can actually aggravate someone's symptoms. But the question is, why do you have IBS in the first place? There's usually an underlying issue or a root cause. The next thing I started doing was incorporating resistant starches into my diet daily. So resistant means that it makes its way into the large intestine where all of your friendly bacteria hang out and feed on these undigested fibers. So they're resistant. So you can find resistant starch in cooked and cooled potatoes, cooked and cooled rice, 
hummus, you can make rice pudding. That is one of my favorite things to do. And then polyphenols. Polyphenols are so, so powerful. They're rich in antioxidants. They have anti-inflammatory, cancer-fighting properties. So you can find these in bright, rich color foods, usually in blue, purple, red, black foods like olives, black rice, black quinoa. So when you're thinking of polyphenols, think foods that stain. So you've got turmeric, blueberries, really, really good for gut health. So that is something that you can start incorporating into your daily diet. Okay, one of the biggest game changers for me was cooking the majority of my meals from home. Something that I love to do is going out to restaurants and eating out with friends and family. And during my gut healing journey, the hardest thing for me was stopping doing that for a while. Because you don't always know what's getting put into your food in restaurants. They use excess salt, excess sugar, inflammatory vegetable oils. And I was just very worried about cross-contamination with gluten since I had to strictly remove it for a period of time. So for me, it was much easier to cook from home. And then once I was healed, I actually found that cooking from home was so much more enjoyable. I would rather have friends over, or I'd rather go to friends' houses for dinner because I knew exactly what was going into my food. I got to choose how much of everything I wanted. I didn't have to ask the waiter to change this and change that. Like, it was just so much easier. And I... I thrive off cooking at home. I'm such a creative person. So that really worked for me and it can work for you too. All right, one of the best things I did for my gut health was I started to balance my blood sugar levels. It's not always about what you eat, but how you eat as well. So it's not about removing your favorite foods. It's about keeping your favorite foods, but just eating them in the right way. So for example, I love chocolate, but it's just about pairing that chocolate with fat so that you don't have a really big spike in blood sugar levels and then you crash and then you go and crave sugar and you, you mindlessly eat and you feel irritable and tired. How you eat is just as important as what you eat. Something I used to do all the time was have sweet breakfast. I loved pancakes, I loved jam on toast. But a really key thing here is I switched from a sweet breakfast to a savory breakfast and this really set me up for the day. It helped me stabilize my blood sugar levels so that I didn't have a big spike. I had less cravings. And the more that I ate healthier foods, the less I craved the processed, the refined sugars, all of that. Something else that I still do to this day is make my own fermented cabbage. You can just buy like half a head of cabbage and make your own. It's literally two ingredients, maybe three. Cabbage, water, salt. And I like to put a bit of white vinegar in it as well. I will leave the recipe down below if you want to make it your own. It is so, so good. It is full of probiotics. All you need is a tablespoon, a meal, and you are going to be repopulating your body with so many beneficial bacteria. What else did I do? Um, I started making my own bone broth. Bone broth is really easy and really, really beneficial. It is so cheap to make your own. It is so easy. If you have a leftover chicken carcass, you can literally just slow cook it for hours. It's going to extract so many nutrients, lots of collagen. It's going to help repair your gut lining, making it stronger. So if you want the bone broth recipe, head over to my Facebook group. I'll leave another link down below. I walk you through how to make that as well. The next thing I started doing was intuitive mindful movement. Instead of vigorous, high intensity like workouts that would just put so much stress on my body. Um, yes, these high intensity workouts are great, but for someone with gut issues, it can do more damage than good. While I was healing, I did a lot of Pilates, a lot of yoga, stretching, walking. If I ever do high intensity workouts these days, I make sure that I follow it by active relaxation. So that looks like breath work, meditation. It's just really managing stress because your body doesn't know what's real and what's perceived. So if you've just put your body through this physical, intense, stressful, workout, it's not really going to know what's real and what's perceived. So make sure that you are telling your body that it's safe to relax, calming that parasympathetic nervous system with your breath. Stress is directly linked to gut health. So make sure that you manage your stress. Oh yes, another thing that I didn't find very hard, but a lot of us do is mindful eating. Because what do most of us do when we are eating our food? We're watching TV, we're scrolling through our phones. The amount of people that I see scrolling through their phones while I'm walking through um, a shopping center and no one's actually focusing on the food. All of they're doing is just focusing on what's going on in their phone. So your body cannot do two things at once. It can either 
rest and digest or be in the fight or flight response. So when you are laser focused on your phone, you're not going to be able to digest your food very well. Mindful eating is the key. I need to take a water break because I've been talking so much. This brings me to my next point. Water is essential. Yes, you need to drink a lot of water and stay hydrated. But on top of that, minerals are just as important. If you are dehydrated and you go and fill yourself up with water, you're not actually hydrating yourself properly. You need minerals to replenish all the electrolytes that you just lost. Something that I love doing is coconut water. I don't like to have too much of it because obviously there's still a lot of sugar in it. Just a couple of sips after a workout as it's got potassium, it's got magnesium. Replacing with minerals, make sure that you do that. And something else that I wrote down was spending more time in nature. During the time when I was having flare-ups, looking back, all I was doing is staying inside. I wasn't getting much sun. I wasn't moving my body. But now that I'm happy and healed, I know how important it is to get sun exposure. Not too much, but just like 10 to 20 minutes a day. Walking barefoot on the ground is very important to, to ground. Going for a walk with your friends, taking your dog for a walk. It's so important. Go swim in the ocean. Okay, this next one is for my people pleasers. Only make time and energy for those that energize you and make you feel good. If they don't make you feel good, they're probably not good for you. If you are hanging around people that don't make you feel good in your body, you were going to run into some issues. What I did is actually started saying no to things that didn't light up my heart and soul. If it didn't feel right in my body, it was a no. And I get this, like it can be very, very hard to start with, especially for the people pleasers. I am, I was a people pleaser, but now I know that my health is so much more important than pleasing somebody else. You're going to be a better person and you can please these other people when you fill up your cup first. When you feel fulfilled, then you can radiate that to everyone else around you. I feel like that is most of the things that I've been doing to holistically heal my gut. Just know that when you start healing and repairing your gut, it will become stronger, it will become more resilient to stresses, more resilient to inflammatory foods that you can have in the future. It does take a little bit of work in the beginning phases because you know, you have to remove a lot of things to rebuild the gut lining. But the goal is to get it stronger so that in the future you can have a little bit of it. And then what is it going to give you? Confidence, happiness, improved relationships. You're going to be motivated. You're going to be clear headed, able to reach your goals. That is why I created the program that I did, Nourish to Flourish. It's a health and healing program to help bloated women in the exact same position that I was in heal sustainably and holistically because I know just how much it can take away from your life. All you're thinking about is what's gonna cause a flare up, what clothes you can wear. Poor gut health literally stops you from living your life to its fullest potential. And I honestly just want everyone to feel the way that I do because there is no better feeling than supporting this body day in and day out that gets me through everything no matter what I've done to it. <laughs> Oh, like there is no better feeling than waking up happy and living in alignment every single day. Not having to worry about what clothes you've got to wear. Not having to worry about going out to dinners and what's going to cause a flare up. It takes up so much brain space when you're dealing with all of these issues. When you heal your gut, you've got more time to focus on what truly matters to you. I just want you to know there is always light at the end of the tunnel. It doesn't always have to be this way. Yes, if you're watching this, you may be feeling at rock bottom right now, but there is always answers. There's always something that you can do. Anyways, I hope that you found this video useful. Make sure that you give it a like so that it shows me you like these types of videos. Next week, I'll be posting a video about why you bloat after everything you eat. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you get notified when that video goes live. I love you all so much. Thank you for watching. Bye.